In this video, we introduce two important complexity classes, P and NP. Let's start by defining the class P. Remember that all reasonable models of computation are polynomially equivalent. By reasonable, we basically are including just about any model of computation that is deterministic. And so we can define the class P as a class of languages that can be decided in polynomial time on a deterministic Turing machine. It's the set of problems that can be solved by deterministic Turing machines in polynomial time. So formally we can specify that this way. Here's a union over all possible exponents. So this includes the problems that are in class n squared and have uh, and problems that are n cubed and so on for all k. These are the problems that can be solved in polynomial time on a deterministic Turing machine. An example problem that's in P is, is the path problem. And here's the problem. Given a directed graph, is there a path from S to T? From, so we're given a graph and two nodes, which we'll call S and T, and the question is whether we can find a path from one to the other. For example, we might be asking whether there's a path from, uh, from 7 in this graph, put a little mark there, to uh, 4, which is here. So can we find a path from 7 uh, in this graph to 4. Oops, that doesn't work. Okay, so in order to prove that this problem can be solved uh, in polynomial time, that is to prove that this problem is a member of the complexity class P, we need to do two things. We need to provide an algorithm that will decide this problem, and then we need to show its running time and show that that is a polynomial function, that it is in a polynomial complexity class. So one thing we can do for the algorithm uh, is, is use a marking algorithm. And uh, uh, the algorithm to solve this is we, we basically start with 7 and we mark it. And then we ask, what can we reach? And I'll mark it with a little x here. And then we ask, which nodes can we reach from 7? Well, let's mark those. We can reach 8 and we can reach 10, so we mark those. And then we say, what can we reach from 8? Well, we can reach 9. And what can we reach from 10? We can reach 12. And then we move on to 9, and what can we reach from that? Well, we can reach 11. And from 12, we can't reach anything. What about from 11? Well, we can reach 10, which we've already marked, and we can reach 5. And going on that way, we can mark 6 from 5, and then we can mark 3 from 5, and we can mark 2, and from 2 we can mark 1, and from 1 we can mark uh, 5, and uh, if I've done this right, it appears that um, we can't reach 4. The only way we could reach 4 is from 13, and there's no way to reach 13. So in this case, the answer is no. There is not a path and we've decided it. Um, and if we analyze the running time of this algorithm that I've just sketched out, uh, it turns out that it's order n squared, uh, here I say m, where m is the number of nodes, so it's order, it's a squared algorithm, order m squared, where m is the number of nodes. So this is in fact a polynomial algorithm, and therefore this problem is in class P. Every context-free language is in class P, and the reason we know this is because we have an algorithm to parse uh, any context-free grammar that runs in order in cube time. Most context-free grammars can be parsed more efficiently, but in the worst case, we can do it with uh, this algorithm uh, that requires in cube time. 
uh, I'm going to just quickly sketch out this um, algorithm. Uh, it's an example of a dynamic programming algorithm. And the idea behind dynamic programming is that you build a table to store partial results. And then this allows you to avoid having to recompute the partial results over and over again. Instead, you just consult the table. So you solve smaller problems and store the results in the table. And then out of those solutions to smaller problems, you build bigger and bigger solutions of bigger and bigger problems and filling in the table. So essentially, and this is a very, very schematic here. Uh, from, for i for running from 1 to n, you compute all results of size i and you store those results and then you make use of those results um, in computing results for larger i. And so you just keep repeating until you run through n. And when the body of this takes n squared time, then um, the whole algorithm takes n cube time. And that's basically what happens with the um, uh, algorithm to parse uh, an arbitrary context-free grammar. Now let's look at a different problem. This is called the Hamiltonian path problem. It's very similar to the path problem we saw earlier but it's called the Hamiltonian path problem. And even though it's superficially similar, um, we'll see that there's an important difference between these two problems. They're substantially different, and uh, that will lead us to a discussion of uh, NP, a different complexity class from P. So first of all, let me describe the problem. Given a directed graph, the question is, is there a path that goes through every node exactly once. And in particular, uh, like in the previous path problem, we're given the starting node and the ending node, S and T. Again, we have a directed graph, we have a starting node and an ending node. The question is not whether there's a path from S to T, but whether there's a path going through all nodes exactly once from S to T. So, uh, next I have an example uh, graph and uh, we're asking, uh, is there a path from 1 to 8? Okay, so I'll draw little arrows here. Okay, that goes through every possible node. And let's just look. Uh, if we go, uh, I'm going to outline a path to 3, and then we'll go to f 5, and then from 5 we'll go to 4. Um, and then from 4 we'll go over to 2, and then back over to 6, and then uh, from 6 we'll go down to 7, and finally we'll go to 8. So this is a, a Hamiltonian path. 1, 3, 5, 4, 2, 6, 7, 8. So let me write those numbers down. 1, 3, 5, 4, 2, 6, 7, 8. That number, which has, uh, in, in this case our graph has eight nodes, this, this number has eight digits, uh, that number is a solution to this problem. Or, and to find that number and to announce that there, yes, there is a Hamiltonian path is what this problem is about. The previous path problem that we looked at was in class P. And we know that it's in class P because we provided a polynomial time algorithm to find a path. The Hamiltonian path problem, though, is different. We know it's an exponential uh, problem because we can provide an algorithm that will solve this in exponential time. But the question about whether it can be solved in polynomial time um, is a different question that we'll come to in a second. But first of all, let me just note that um, a, sol a, a solution or a path um, is, in this case of a graph with n nodes, it's a string of uh, n uh, node names, in this case uh, eight uh, nodes. One approach to solving this problem is to generate all possible paths. and There are an exponential number of these possible paths. And then we can just test each path to see if it's a legal path. That can be done in polynomial time. 
For example, we look at our graph and we ask, can we go from 1 to 2, uh, 2 to 3? Well, if we look at our graph, we find that we cannot go from 1 to 2, so right away we can rule out the first one. And we can test every single possible path this way, and if one of them uh, is legal, then we found a path uh, through the graph. So um, the idea here is that we test each path to see if it's legal. And the test can be done quickly. We can test each candidate solution in polynomial time, but there are exponentially many um, possible paths, and so the best algorithm that we've been able to come up with for this problem requires exponential time. So it seems that this problem requires exponential time, in spite of its uh, superficial similarity to the other path problem, which only required polynomial time. So this problem is an example of a, of a problem that's in class NP. Okay? Uh, this, it seems to require exponential time. But um, interestingly enough, for problems in this, in this class, given an answer, in this case given a path, we can verify that it's a proper answer, that it's legal, and we can do that in polynomial time. So that's a, character, a, a, a characteristic of these problems that are in NP. What we know is that these problems seem to require exponential time. They have exponential time solutions, and they and nobody can find polynomial time solutions, but on the other hand, we can't prove that a polynomial time solution doesn't exist. So it seems that these problems are require exponential time and that they are not polynomial time problems, but there's the, the proof that an algorithm doesn't exist is 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 rather difficult, and so these problems are not, it's not clear whether they're uh, in P as well.